Hey, congratulations on monuments. Thank you so much. Hey, so uh, so tell us. Uh, let's start off with the easy question. Tell us where the original idea actually came from for monuments. Yeah, so it came from a. Um, well, I guess to answer the question, I, I need a little bit of prologue to get there. And um, when I was in high school and college, my I lost my mother and my brother both uh, to cancer, sort of uh, unexpectedly. And not to glaze over that because it is basically prologue. You know, it not it goes without saying, like awful, one of the worst experiences of my life, C character defining sort of moments. You know, life defining sort of moments when you deal with that loss, but. Fast forward and I'm getting married and um, to my now wife and, you know, thinking about this life together now with her and dealing with all of the things that when you get married and you think about being with that person, you know, you think about these other things like when you when you've lost people and her, her mom, my mother in law knew that I was a filmmaker and she was like, Oh, I wrote this short story. Would you want to read it? You know, I don't know if she ever thought I'd turn it into a movie and her short story was about a couple who newly married and the wife dies and she's like i'd love to have been scattered in the museum and he breaks in the museum and when i read it and i was dealing with probably unresolved issues with my the loss of my mom and my brother and then this new life with my wife i read the story and it really struck a chord with me and i said you know could i could i take this film could i take your short story and adapt it into a film because i think it'll allow me the opportunity it gives me enough story you know, it's beginning, middle and end for me to sort of use it as a way for me to talk about these things that I've been thinking about for the last 15 years about how to deal with grief. And and then the film is sort of a almost like a thesis statement or like a position piece on here's all the different ways that we deal with grief, whether that's the grief of losing a loved one or, you know, after the year of COVID, it's the who we were beforehand. And it's it's sometimes funny and sometimes sad and sometimes you know wistful and sometimes insane and, and and all of the above and so that's that's essentially how we got to monuments <laughs> so how, how did you come across with the idea of uh you know a, of a spirit or a ghost uh, that kind of uh follows the husband uh, through, throughout the entire story yeah that's a good question because that wasn't in the short story and i think that you know, when I write, it's a very intuitive and very iterative process. And I started writing and it just felt like the thing I was interested in exploring, because the idea is like, you don't really get a lot of time with the couple when they're, when she's alive, when they're both alive. Like they only really have like mm, two and a half scenes, maybe. Um, and only one of them where they were in the coin flip scene where they're really like talking about stuff. You really actually learn a lot more about who they are as people and his couple after she's dead, which is sort of weird. But the idea being that, you know, I could or like, I want to get running, but relation to explore is that it isn't just Ted alone being sad and, you know, a widower. It's, it's really the joy of who they were as a couple and who she was to him. And so I think it just came out of that idea of, I want to have more time with her basically and them as a as a couple i i always enjoy road trip movies and you you base this in you know the midwest uh, america's heartland there is is that uh is that your comfort zone uh, is that where you're from i am i'm from outside i'm from chicago and so yeah but i chicago. think also the, yeah <laughs> excellent you yeah. know Hey, there we go. All right. <laughs> are you, are you, I used to live in uh, Joliet, Illinois. So. Oh, that's great. Part of it, too, though, is this idea that, like, we always said while we were making it that, like, Ted is so – we had a couple of things. One was, that, like, Ted is, like, a crappy Indiana Jones, and a lot of his, like, styling actually in the movie is based off of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. But um, also this idea that this movie is, you know, it's a really small film. It's a story about two people, but told on an epic – canvas it's told in an, in an epic way but part of what bring, part of what that is is that we we sort of want to set it in a world of like a forgotten america or like literally fly over country which is what the mid middle west is and sort of avoiding the coasts and so it's not a road trip from like the tip of alaska to the bottom of florida it's not about the entire country it's about this it's not even you know the coasts from la to new york it's from boulder to chicago and then back right and so it's the part of the world it's the part of america that we just don't ever think about and i we just sort of liked that as a way to sort of keep it as an underdoggy sort of small 
overlooked story, but it's for the people living it. It's epic. It's huge. It's big for them because it's it's the defining moment of this character's life. So how how did you handle the production of you know of of a road trip? Did you uh, basically did that trek from Boulder to Chicago, or did you basically try to choose locations that looks like locations between Boulder and Chicago? Yeah, a little bit of both. You know, we we started the majority, probably three quarters of the shoot was in Chicago in the suburbs of, and then we took the whole production. We flew out and then uh, had a truck track a track a trailer that brought the truck out, um, and we did a week in Boulder, and then um, we started. We filmed in the fall of 2018. That was about 20 days of shooting, which was a lot, and. Um, like a lot to do on this film in a very short period of time. And then we started editing. And then the spring of the following year, we actually did five more days of shooting where we drove with the me and Stephanie, the DP and a couple of crew members, we drove the truck again and just sort of filmed along the way to sort of fill it out. And then um, we did two more days of filming a couple months later of the puppet show and that was in Chicago. So it was a little bit of a little bit of everything. Yeah. So what what music? museum did you actually use uh, for Chicago or did you actually get permission to use a museum? Yeah, we filmed it at the Field Museum here in Chicago. Oh, wow. That's uh, that's actually uh, quite, quite, quite a feat itself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, we were sort of worried because of the nature of the story where a guy wants to scatter his wife's ashes you know, at a museum. When we went to them, we were like, oh man, they're going to hate this. But they liked it, you know, and as a museum, they deal with lots of weird people and weird requests, you know, all the time. So this probably wasn't even the weirdest that they got. Um, but they were a dream to work with. It was amazing. It was amazing to film there, too. So, so cool. Where what, Was it difficult uh, for production uh, to, uh, to do a track production like, um, like, like this uh, for yourself? Or do you find it, uh, you know, easy and satisfying? I don't know if filmmaking is ever easy. Um, not, not like it's rocket science, but it's like it's always emotionally, psychologically, mentally, you know, taxing and sort of part of this film because it was so personal to me in terms of dealing with these issues. Like they pulled up a lot of stuff. And part of that's the the joy of making art is is not necessarily for the therapy, but for the opportunity to have a conversation with other artists about these issues like my actors and and sort of find a way to understand what are these things that I'm feeling and then putting it into, you know, a story that people can connect with. Um, and then, you know, from the production logistics side of things, it was, it was hard. I mean, this was definitely a hard film to make. It was, didn't have enough money, didn't have enough time, the whole, the whole thing. And um, let, let's round, round it uh, with, with the, with the cast. Um, I mean, Marguerite and um, David is, are, are wonderful in this film, and um, I especially like uh, Javier's, uh, you know, comedy scenes um, in there because he he, he kind of stole the show in, in yeah. his own way. Could you uh, could you talk about the cast uh, for for your film? Yeah, um, I love you know I'd, I've been a big fan of David and Marguerite from just the previous films they'd done, so getting the chance to work with them was great. Javier, I hadn't seen. Uh, him and Hamilton. Actually, I didn't see Hamilton until he took me and David and Marguerite at, to, to go to the Chicago production, which was amazing to be able to like watch Hamilton sitting next to Hamilton. Like it was unbelievable. Um, and we all like cried our asses off just watching that show. And it's like, it's just, you know, it's intense when you're sitting next to the guy who played it on Broadway for a million years. But um, they were great you know that we all had them come out like a couple days before from la and from new york and we all sort of had dinner and hung out and build rapport and then um started rehearsals and we had to do a lot of dance choreography ahead of time because there's a lot of dancing in the film you know and so that was a way for us to sort of build this this working relationship um and then um you know, acting is really hard. I would never be an actor, I don't think. I, the amount of trust that they need to put in directors and, and the team is incredible. And so they trusted me. And, um, you know, they gave incredible performances um, that I'm thrilled with. Because it's actually fairly hard. Like, there's not really an easy part. Like, ha ha Javier's job is to be the bad guy. And sort of, he's sort of a crazy guy, you know. And he's bigger, he's larger than life, you know. And David has to do romance 
He has to do drama. He has to cry. He has to be funny. He has to be smart funny. He has to do slapstick comedy. He has to do action. Um, and Marguerite's dead the entire time. So it's like, how do you how do you prepare for that? So I think they just were really game to like dig in on it and help me do this. And and you can see it because you know they're all wonderful in the film, as is everyone in the film, even the supporting the supporting players. You know that 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 always comes to the fact of you know for with with every great actor, there's always a great uh, director behind them uh, because the directors are the ones that actually make them look good. Even if yeah. you act act great, a horrible director can still make them look bad. So oh, you, you, so you, true. <laughs> you still done a wonderful job on on this one, making them look good. And uh, and 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 for yourself. You tend to, uh, because I noticed on your, uh, your filmography, you, you like to do, you do, you do quite a few uh, comedy romances. Is that, uh, is it, would you, is that your specialty or you like to gravitate towards uh, those type of films? I think, so I'm a bit weird because I do writer director stuff. I also do documentary where, you know, I made 42 grams and I'm in, I just locked a picture on a documentary about a school being built in Haiti. So that's like, uh, not a romantic comedy at all. It's uh, <laughs> the exact opposite. Um, and then I also do, you know, some work for hire stuff, you know, and 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 that's interesting too. So I sort of bounce around. I mean, I really like collaboration. I really like storytelling and filmmaking. And so I actually probably, to answer your question as honestly as possible, I think my interest is not in one spot or like, I don't think I would, I have a speciality. I think I'm so equally drawn by all these different ways to tell story, whether it be a documentary about international economic aid and racism, or, you know, a food documentary or a romantic comedy or a Christmas movie or monuments, which is sort of, you know, tonally very, I say it's tonally promiscuous. Like it's, it's sort of always playing with all these different tones. Um, I sort of, that, that's why monuments for me feels really me because I'm also so interested in lots of different, I don't think necessarily it needs to be one thing where it's just dark or it's just funny or it's just this thing. Monuments obviously dials that up to maybe an 11. Um, but I just think it's more colorful. I sort of look at it like a painting, like you can, sometimes I feel like movies that are made dealing with death, it's like, well, here, I took a canvas and I painted it black. And it's like, okay, I mean, that that works. I mean, you painted a black canvas, it's dark and makes me feel this way. And monuments, if you take the same analogy, it's a very colorful canvas. There's black and there's yellow and there's red and there's green. I mean, it's like, there's all of these different things. And I think it just does a better job of encapsulating my experience with this subject matter. Um, in a way that I think is just something you can do in film and in the arts that is really great. Excellent. And one more thing before I let you go, where is that truck now? Oh man, every single, it was so funny because whenever I drove that around, cause I bu basically bought it, you know, because we, we found it and I bought it and then production like paid me back. Whenever I'd go anywhere, whenever I drove past women, they would just be like, Oh God, like just cause it's loud and smelly. And whenever I drove past dudes, they'd all be like, this truck, man, like, where'd you get that thing? You know? And it was like, I was getting picked up by dudes all the time who like wanted to drive my truck. So it made through all the production. We shot the whole thing. And then I told you before we drove back to Boulder and 90 miles outside of Boulder, we threw a rod and um, the car blew up. Basically the engine blew up. And so we had to tow it from, we were at a tr uh, gas station stop and uh, we had to tow it back. We had to tow it to Boulder and we hadn't even finished filming yet. And we shot a lot of the interior of the truck um, with, you know, like PAs and grips, like shaking the truck and then the hands doing the stuff to make it look like it was moving. And then um, I won't tell you where, but there's a couple parts of the movie where I still didn't have a shot of the truck driving down the mountain like I needed it to. And we asked the tow truck guy and I was like, what are the rules around where you tow this? And he was like, there's no rules. Like you just pay me $125 every time that I, 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 I load your truck up. So I was like, I, you could take it anywhere. And I just have to pay you $125. He's like, yeah. I was like, okay. So we drove to the top of a mountain basically. And he unhooked it and we just drove it down and we'd set up our shot and it would just coast down. And then we'd slam on the brakes because the brakes still worked. Stephanie would move the camera, set up a new shot, let it coast. And then we literally, we shot like five or six different shots there. And then we just rolled it back on and caved the guy 250 bucks and they turned it into a cube because it was completely totaled. 
wow. Yeah. I I have to adore you know the, the behind the scenes movie magic that, that yeah. people actually do because uh, that's the thing about the beauty of filmmaking. You have to be very creative. Totally. Well, Jack, thank you for speaking to us about Monuments. It's a, it's a lovely movie, and um, can't wait to, to talk to you again on your next project. Thanks very much, Good Good to talk to you.